is necessary, given the systemic effect that we already see. Based on that systemic effect as well, um, I know it's obviously a good thing, but what if you're doing laser hair removal on the body as well? Does that then stimulate? Well, it, you know, it, it, it probably would. <laughs> You know, I mean, the thing is, you need to wait and see how effective the hair removal has been. If it has been really effective, then you can treat. If it hasn't, then it's, you, need, you need to retreat until there's no hairs appearing. We've looked at it, but the, in order to produce with the same quality of LEDs would be very expensive. That would be an expensive system. There'd be a problem cooling, which means that your treatment room would become quite hot, right? And, uh, but the, I think the, the major problem is why irradiate the whole body? You know, when we know that we can get a systemic effect by, say, the chest or the back or any area with, with major lymph nodes. Did you say you did the PDT therapy with the light? We, you can. Do you put a, anything like nebulina or anything on before? Yes, we put 5ALA of some, some description. And uh, in, in our protocol, we activate with the red not with the blue, right? Because Levulan was uh, designed to be used with a system called uh, True Blue or blue, U, blue something or other, and it was not 415 nanometers. It was actually off 415 nanometers. If you activate ALA with 415, that's extremely painful and really damaging. But if you activate with red, not only is it milder, but the red penetrates much, much more. So you're getting deeper quenching of the 5-ALA, porphyrins. If you treat with blue only and the patient goes out into the sunshine, they're photosensitive. And they have to wear a hat and gloves and all the rest of it. So yes, 5-ALA can be activated with red for acne. But my argument would be why fight damage with damage unless there is some good reason, you know, speed of treatment and all that sort of stuff. Um, we, <laughs> we do have an approach for treating melanocytes, but yeah. not with the heel light. The heel light will help neutralize the excessive melanin production through controlling dopa, dopamine. Because the, the whole idea, and in my next presentation, I'm going to talk about a different machine which does deal directly with the melanosomes within the melanocytes. Right? But this one does it, not, not as well, but it does bleach uh, young pigmenting lesions like nevus pilus. Um, it's also quite good for cloasma and, and uh, melasma. Yeah. But what is it doing? It's normalizing the excessive production, excessive oxidization of the melanosomes. Right? Um, melanosomes start clear. No. Melanosomes start clear when they are pre-melanosome stage one. Then as they move out along the dendrites, they are oxidized and they start to turn black. And that's because of excessive uh, tyrosinase, tyrosine, tyrosinase, and also uh, tyrosinase reflecting protein 1 and 2, TERP 1, 2. Um, that's what causes the excessive darkness. And then when they fragment into the upward moving daughter keratinocytes, they produce more coarse granules. So it appears as if they're darker, but in fact, there's, there's still the same amount of melanin, there's still the same amount of, of, of melanocytes, it's just excessive oxidization. So when we come in with the 830, it induces some, and this is not 100% proven yet, but uh, we believe that it cuts down on the level of dopa, dopamine. Right? And this blackening is a, a dopa reaction. And, and, and that's how we postulate that the 830 can deal with pigmented lesions. Right? I need to push on because I'm beyond my time. <laughs> okay, skin rejuvenation, uh, <laughs> the optimum result. This uh, again, a couple of studies. I'm not going to go into loads and loads of pretty pictures, although there are pretty pictures, but these are published papers, Journal of Cosmetic and Laser Therapy. Right, this lady taking good care of her skin 
baseline is March 1st. She was treated uh, eight times with the 830 and 633 combo, and this was 22nd of April. So there will be further improvement because there is remodeling, but already there is a significant change in her periorbital wrinkles. But the biggest change is in her rosacea. Right? And we know now that 830 deals very nicely with the inflammatory type of rosacea. Now, if you have to read... Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> if you have to read one single paper, this is the paper to read. Right? It's uh, Sangyum Lee, same Dr. Lee that did the acne study, and it was published in the Journal of Photomedicine and Photobiology B, which is absolutely the top journal for phototherapy or anything photobiological. And you can see from the length of the title that this is not a simple study. <laughs> it was prospective, randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blinded, everything that a study should be. And it had some very interesting results. All patients were split face. Right? Some of them were not so happy at the end of the study, but there we are, such is life. <laughs> this is science, as I was told by Dr. Moy last night. Right? Science comes before medicine. <laughs> so there were three treatment groups. One was LED 830 on its own, one was 633 on its own, and one was a combination. Two treatments per week for four weeks. Uh, in the case of the combination, the 830 was always applied before the 633. And then there was a fourth group, which was the control group. And that used sham light. It used the standby red light of the Omnilux, which is only 1.3 joules per square centimeter. But patients believed they were being treated. And again, it was hemifacial. One side was exposed and the other side was covered. Of course, there is a systemic effect but we are comparing all patients with each other. So it's still a good intergroup study. And obviously the journal thought so. Right? Just as I said, 20 minutes treatment. Um, it was four weeks, twice a week, etc., etc. Now this is one of her patients. This is a 47-year-old Korean lady. And there's the result. That's not a, a subtle result. That's a very good result on her uh, crow's feet, and also significant lightening of the skin. Again, mexameter tested 0 0.0001. Another slightly less crow's footed lady, but an equally good treatment result. And the quality of the skin is so much better. And the nice thing is that you, you I mean, again, this is patient education. You don't get the best result at the end of the final treatment you get the best result up to 12 weeks and beyond. So it's, it's a progressive result. And again, nothing else was used in this study. No creams, nothing. This was a simple light-only study. When we look beneath the surface of the skin, this is hematoxylin and eosin staining of a skin specimen. This is the dermis. This is a hair in a hair follicle. This is the epidermis with the stratum corneum and the dermo-epidermal junction. You can see that where uh, it stains reddish, that means collagen. That's what hematoxylin and eosin does. It stains collagen kind of reddish. And you look at this and you can see much, much, much more red. But not only that, but you can see a thicker epidermis. You can see this layer here, which is called the Grenz layer is much, much uh, better aligned. And when you look at the stratum corneum, you can see a much better organized stratum corneum. Now, what does this mean? It means that when light goes into the skin, it doesn't get bounced about and looks dull. It means the skin looks luminous. So this is not SOE, same old epidermis. This is NNE, nice new epidermis. <laughs> <laughs> and the same with elastin. Now, most dermatologists will tell you when you've lost your elastin, you've lost it. It's gone. And it's elastin that stops this downward dragging of the face by gravity. But you can see here, with this different stain, Verhoff van Giesen, much denser elastic fibers, thicker epidermis, 
better stratum corneum. Right? So this is very nice histological proof. This is transmission electron microscopy of a sham side, a sham irradiated face, and that's a fibroblast, very kind of anemic looking fibroblast. <laughs> and this is the 830 nanometer side of another patient's uh, face, and you can see a much plumper, an active fibroblast. You can see very poorly organized collagen. You can see very nicely organized collagen surrounding this fibroblast. So at all levels, including a machine measurement, that was control, 633, combination, and 830 on its own produced the best change in actual elasticity of the skin, measured with an elastometer, a cutometer. And when we looked at how the patients felt, these are excellent only. That was red, which was 66% of the patients. And that was the combination, which was 70% of the patients. And that was um, uh, the, the, the 830, which was 73. But the important thing to look is here, how early the 830 patients were extremely satisfied. And that's only excellent. That's not including the very good results. Questions on skin rejuvenation? Yes. So if we do um, push this treatment on our patients, why won't we have younger looking patients but hairier patients? <laughs> why don't we have? I mean, you know, I think the science is there to confirm the skin rejuvenation, but is the science there to to, to promise that they won't get hairier on the face. Hairier? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, Korean ladies are extremely particular about their hairy faces. <laughs> and not one patient out of these 79 complained about any hair growth. It's well, not we are seen. using it for hair regrowth in other areas. Aren't yes, you? they're using it for hair regrowth in other areas where the hair is insufficient where the hair follicles are abnormal. Mm. The whole point about phototherapy is it takes an abnormal situation and tries to make it normal. So if you have normal hair, in most cases you are not going to get <laughs> hair growth by shining light on your face. I mean, don't look at me when you... <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Were they, all Korean they were all Korean subjects, yes. They're not as hairy as... No, they're, they're not as hairy, but they do like their hair removed. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Hair removal is a big thing in Korea. Especially, even from the face. Yeah. Okay. Wound healing. you lovely. Now, all of these types of wounds respond well to 830 nanometers, particularly 830. S surgery traumatic ulcers of any kind, bone fractures, osseointegration for implants and prosthesis, uh, sports injuries or acute or chronic pain, it all responds well to 830 nanometers. And you know, we, we look here at this little Korean girl who cut her head open with a kitchen knife, oh. accidentally, <laughs> one, one supposes accidentally, and fortunately, she went to Professor Kim, who is one of the leading trauma specialists, trauma and burn specialists in Seoul. It was sutured closed. She was treated eight times with 830, twice a week, and this was the result. Now, this is not a scar. This is secondary hyperpigmentation. The other problem with Korean and Japanese skin in particular is that it is so weak. Physically, you damage it, you will get brown marks. So that, that's why this is here. And I don't have the follow-up picture, unfortunately. For some reason, I've lost it. Uh, but I had one three months after this, and that had completely disappeared. But you can see from the shape of her eyebrow, there is no scar. You know, it's perfectly normal. Oops. This is a lady who got herself bitten by her dog. I don't know what she did to it. 
But Korean ladies love their dogs, especially rat dogs. I mean, uh, lovely chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, madam, did I stand on your rat? Oh, it's a dog. Well, I'm sorry about that. So uh, she got it treated elsewhere, but it's infected and it was painful. This is four heel light sessions. So the inflammation has gone and the wounds are improving. That's uh, four uh, two, uh, for eight days, eight days. And here we see nine sessions every other day. So this is after another 18 days. So we have 26 days between here and here. Very nice result. This is a gentleman who had filler for his uh, glabellar lines. Unfortunately, the filler was improperly applied and he got an ischemic ulcer. Right, ischemic uh, blood, blood supply was constricted. So tissue necrosis, inflammation, and it was very, very painful. Uh, Dr. Min uh, uh, took out the ischemic area, escherotomy, and this is a no flap, so no cosmetic surgery. And this was two weeks after every other day treatment with heel light. This was three weeks after baseline, and this was a further three weeks, six weeks after baseline. Now there is still uh, a little bit of a mm, cosmetic problem with this dip, but you look from here to here, this could have been much, much more serious. So 8.30 not only heals wounds, it controls inflammation and it controls infection. Here's another example of a lady that had a lip tattoo in a clinic that was not licensed to perform lip tattoos and she ended up with swollen lips, she had a fever and she had herpes simplex. It was unsuccessfully treated by the time she came to see Dr. Min. She was numbness and slightly palsied on the right side of her face. This is one week of six treatments after six treatments. You can see the herpes simplex is dying down, reduction in the swelling, and the pain had totally gone. This is two weeks after baseline, treating every other day, so changing from treating every day to every other day. And we look at the final result three weeks after baseline. No sign of recurrence of the herpes simplex in a three-month follow-up. Yes? Do you do each um, treatment for 20 minutes as well? Um, that, this, was, this was heel light, so it was 11 minutes. Oh, right, okay, 11 minutes. 11 minutes, yeah. yeah. Every day? Um, um, well, it was, um, she was done daily, daily, and then this was every other day, and this was every other day. Uh, it's been used for um, herpes zoster, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the intercostal type of herpes zoster has also been used for, uh, you know, op ophthalmicus with good results. This is a little boy, pulled some boiling water.